an occasion much like this. is depicted, unveiled, and portrayed in the book of Second Chronicles chapters 5, 6, and 7. I want as best I can to allow the Lord to speak through his word. The very last two verses of the fifth chapter read thusly. It came to pass as the trumpeters, the musicians and singers were as one to make a sound to be heard in praising and thanking the Lord. And when they lifted up their voice with the trumpets and cymbals and instruments of music and praised the Lord saying, for he is good for his mercy endureth forever that then the house was filled with a cloud even the house of the Lord So that the priests could not stand to minister by reason of the cloud. Hmm. For the glory of the Lord had filled the house. It was a house of glory. An unusual manifestation of the glory of God. The occasion was the dedication and celebration of the completion of the house of God. And the Bible suggests that the musicians and choirs had joined together in unity, singing praises and songs of thanksgiving to God. And that when they did so, the Bible says, then the house was filled with a cloud. The Bible says it was the glory cloud of God in, in the holy of holies of the temple. There was the Shekinah glory of God. The Ark of the Covenant beyond the veil symbolized the presence and glory of God in the midst of his people. And yet the Bible says that on this day, on this occasion of the dedication and celebration of the completion of this house, there was an unusual manifestation of this glory. For the glory of God was not merely beyond the veil, symbolized by the ark and the Shekinah of God, but that the entire house 
was filled with a cloud so that there was glory beyond the veil and there was glory in the entire house the, the, that was a an unusual revelation of this glory not merely the Shekinah of God but this the Samsum Ha Shekinah of God it was the T-S-I-M T-S-U-M Samsum Ha Shekinah it was the, a concentration of the glory of God manifest in a cloud that filled the entire place to such a degree that the Bible says the priests Ah, could, 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 could not stand. God stopped the program. They, they threw away the order of worship that Sunday. Nobody needed a bulletin that Sunday. God did not come to take sides. He came to take over. And the glory of God manifested itself in such a way that God filled the house and took charge. Mm. the day is going to come city of refuge when you come into this house and God will manifest himself in such an unusual way uh, there may not be an A and B selection that Sunday there may not be the general order of worship you may not be able to stick to the cloud to, to the clock that Sunday because God will move in such an unusual way that there is such a concentration of his glory that it seems as though there's no glory any place but this house. Now in your intellectual mind, you know that God is too big to be housed in this house. But it is such an unusual outpouring of the presence of God that it seems as though the glory of God has compacted itself and, and concentrated itself in this house to such a degree that he takes over, changes the program, changes the order of worship, changes the order. No thing that had been planned will go on that day because God has taken charge. Ah, that day shall come in this house. The glory of God shall fill this place. The Bible says that Solomon then takes sinner court. And he said in chapter 6 verse 1. The Lord hath said that he would dwell in the thick darkness. But I have built a house, a habitation for thee. A place for thy dwelling. Verse 3. And the king turned his face and blessed the whole congregation of Israel. And they stood and he said blessed be the Lord God of Israel who hath with his hands fulfilled that which he spake with his mouth to my father David saying since the day that I brought forth my people out of the land of Egypt I chose no city among all the tribes of Israel to build a house in that my name might be there neither chose I any man to be ruler over my people Israel but I have chosen this place Jerusalem that my name might be there and I've chosen David to be over my people Israel now It was in the heart of David my father to build a house for the name of the Lord God of Israel But the Lord hath said to David and as much as thine heart It was in thine heart to build a house thou didst well that it was in thine heart Notwithstanding thou shalt not build the house, but thy son Which shall come forth out of thy loins? He shall build the house for my name the Lord therefore hath performed his word that he hath spoken. For I am risen up in the room of David my father and am set on the throne of Israel as the Lord promised. And have built the house for the name of the Lord God of Israel. Solomon stood and declared that he was a part of God's continuity. That that which God began with one king would be carried forth in the next king that which God did in the spirit of the father would come forth in the life of the son the foundation that was led in the former generation shall be fulfilled in the latter generation a man by the name of McMurray 
had a heart for this city. And God honored his labor. And yet that which he did was but foundation for the Solomon that comes on the scene to fulfill the plan and ordained destiny of God. And Solomon stands. Verse 13. For they had made a brazen scaffold and upon it he stood and kneeled down upon the knees, his knees, before the congregation and spread forth his hand toward God. Verse 17. And he said, O Lord of Israel, let your word be verified, which thou hast spoken unto thy servant David. But will God in very deed dwell in men on the earth behold heaven and earth of heavens cannot obtain contain thee how much less this house which I have built we come to celebrate this house that has been dedicated to the glory of God and yet every time you come into this place you must magnify him for to magnify him means to declare that he is bigger you must recognize that God is bigger than the house that you've planned for him. And when you magnify him, you declare that God is greater and bigger than this very place in which you come to worship him. For even this house cannot contain him. Stay with me. Come on. Watch what the text says. And then he says, verse 19. Have respect, therefore, listen, to the prayer of thy servant and to his supplication. O Lord my God, to hearken unto the cry and the prayer which thy servant prayeth before thee. Look at me. He says this. He raises his hand before God, stretches his arm before the people and says, O God, hear the prayer that I pray in this place. Listen. O God, hear the prayer and the cry of this prayer that I pray in this place watch this Solomon says Lord I call out to you and I ask that you would hear this prayer that I pray in this place come here watch the prayer verse 20 that thine eyes may be open upon this house. Everyone say this house. Day and night upon the place whereof thou hast said that thou wouldest put thy name there to hearken unto the prayer which thy servant prayeth toward this place. Verse 21. Hearken therefore unto the supplications of thy servant and of thy people Israel which they shall make toward this place. Everyone say this place. Hear thou from thy dwelling place, even from heaven, and when thou hearest, forgive. Look at me. He says this. O Lord, hear the prayer that I pray. And in this prayer, I pray that you would hear the prayers that will be prayed by the people who pray in this place. You didn't get it. You missed it. He prays a prayer. Listen. He prays a prayer for the prayers that will be prayed by the prayers in that place. You missed it. He says, Lord, hear this prayer. But the prayer that he prayed was a prayer that God would hear the prayers of the prayers that would be prayed. Ah, I got a long way to go and a short time to get there. In the dedication of the temple, he acknowledged that it was to be a house of prayer. And so he prays a prayer for the prayers that would be prayed by the prayers in that place. He says, Lord, hear my prayer that I pray. And the prayer that I pray is the prayer for the prayers that will be prayed by the prayers who pray in this place. Ah, oh, God help me. I got a long way to go. Watch this. He prays a prayer, listen now, that is a series of hypothetical probabilities. He 
he moves through this prayer that continues into chapter 7 with a series of hypothetical probabilities. He prays the prayer in this structure. Lord, hear the prayers that will be prayed. Here's the structure. Now, Lord, if they pray this, then would you do this? You, you missed it. It, it. It's a series of hypothetical probabilities. It's a prayer that gives a series of if then. If they pray this, then would you do this? If they ask that, then would you do this? If they have this, then would you give that? It's a series of hypothetical probabilities. He says, Lord, I know they're going to pray in this place. Now, when they come to pray, just in case they pray this way, I want to ask you before they pray to answer this way. God, I wish I had somebody. He, he says, Lord, if, 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 if. Moving us into chapter 7 that you know where he says, if my people. Who, can, who are called by my name. Uh, I can heal this land. I can heal this city. I can fix this community. I can handle crips and bloods. If I can just get my crowd, the crowd called by my name. Now, if they call upon your name, then would you hear from heaven and heal this bad boy? Come on, come on, come on. I got he, he says, Lord, if then. Watch what he says. He says, Lord, if they pray this kind of prayer, then would you answer this way? He says, first of all, Lord, let this be a house of forgiveness. Ah, God. Come here, come here. Watch what he says. He says this. He says, Lord, verse 21, hearken unto thy servant, and that people, the prayers that they will make toward this place. And when you hear them, listen, forgive. Verse 20 says, that your eyes, watch it, may be open upon this place. Listen. The phrase may be open is a participle that suggests this. It is an action in the past that remains in the present. He says this. Lord, open your eyes to this place and keep them open. He says, Lord, keep your eye on this place. Ah, 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 ah. That, 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 that's not a selfish prayer. That is not a prayer that suggests that God should close his eyes to every other place. But it is rather a, God, a prayer of God's omnipotence and God's omnipresence. It's a, a prayer that says, Lord, I know you are God enough and powerful enough to keep your eye on this place. Now, I'm not asking you to, to forget about anybody else, but you are God enough to take care of them when they call. But when, when we call in this place, keep your eye on this place. Open your eyes and Lord, keep your eye on, keep looking at this house. Because there's going to be a crowd that comes up in here. I know this crowd. And the folk that come to this house to pray will be folk who eventually and sooner or later will come in need of forgiveness. Because the crowd that comes in this house will not be a perfect crowd. It will not be those who have not made mistakes. This will not be those who have not fallen. Now, deliver me from saints who have never made a mistake. I cannot relate to your testimony. I need somebody who knows what it's like to fall down. I need somebody who knows what it's like to miss it and yet know the forgiveness and cleansing power of the blood of Jesus. What can wash away my sins? Nothing. There will be folk who come into this house, oh God, who will come in need of forgiveness. This is not a museum of perfection. It's an emergency room of sick folk trying to get well. And when they come up in here, oh God, forgive. He stands and says, Lord, I pray that when they come unto you, 
and they call upon your name let it be a house of forgiveness I gotta move on watch this verse 22 if a man sin against his neighbor watch this and an oath be laid upon him to make him swear and the oath be before thine altar in this house everyone say this house then there it is then verse 22 if verse 23 then hear thou from heaven and do listen now and judge thy servants by requiting the wicked by recompensing his way upon his own head and by justifying the righteous by giving him according to his righteousness look at me not only a house of forgiveness but a house of mercy watch what he said because there are those who will come in need of forgiveness there are by definition those who will come with sin in their lives so he says now Lord if they come and they have sinned then hear them and deal with their sin but let the punishment for their sin rest on their head don't punish the whole crowd because of a few folk that don't want to do right don't lift your anointing from this house because somebody waits away from you don't lift your power from this house because someone goes away from your will don't lift your presence from this house because someone walks away from your presence oh God don't wink at sin deal with it but don't let all of us suffer because somebody up in here brings their mess and doesn't want to get right deal with it oh God but let the righteous reign and stand before you cleansed and forgiven somebody help me praise God in here it must be a house of mercy Lord don't let my neighbor mess up my thing over here some folk don't want to do right y'all ain't got it over here y'all too spirit I said some folk come up in here don't want to do right but Lord when the folk that don't want to act right come up in here don't mess up with me I'm trying to do right I'm trying to be holy I'm trying to live sanctified I want to walk in the spirit I want to walk in the anointing oh God have mercy if this is a house of prayer for all people what that means is all kind of folk coming up in here and Paul sets the record straight such were some of you anything that comes up in here is gonna find something that look just like them such were some of you everybody in here is an ex something and all y'all ain't ex yet but Solomon says Lord don't let this one who don't want to be ex mess me up I'm trying to walk upright I'm trying to get cleansed I'm trying to do right I need mercy Sit down, sit down. We, we go on in a minute. We go on in a minute. I know you're tired. I know you're tired. Verse 24. Let me hurry through here. And if that people Israel, if, there it is, if they be put to the worst before the enemy, because they have sinned against thee, and shall return and confess thy name, and pray and make supplication before thee in this house everyone said this house then there it is hear thou from the heavens listen and forgive the sin of the people and bring them again everyone say again unto the land which thou gavest to them and to their fathers look at me not only a house of forgiveness and not only a house of mercy but a house of restoration 
Ah, you didn't get it. He says, Lord, there's some folk that's coming up in here who have fallen victim to the attack of the enemy. And because of sin in their lives, because of ungodliness, because of unrighteousness, the devil has gotten the best of them. And because of the attack of the devil in their lives, they have lost their possession. They have lost their inheritance. But God, if they come and fall on their knees and ask for your forgiveness, then would you hear, watch this, not just cleanse them and forgive them, but take them back to the land that you've already given them. Y'all ain't got it. This shall be a house of restoration where men and women have fallen under the hand of the enemy and have lost ground in their journey toward the kingdom destiny. And yet God says when they come into this house because of the anointing that rests in this place and they call upon God with a contrite heart, and they bow on their knees and ask God to forgive them and seek the cleansing power of God. The prayer that already covers this house is not only that God will cleanse, not only that God will forgive, not only that God will walk upright, but that God will then turn around and restore that which he gave you in the first place. Now watch. That doesn't mean that you need to go and take back what the devil took from you because there's some stuff that the devil took from you that God didn't give you in the first place you've got to learn to move with discernment and some stuff tell the devil now you can keep that right there you, you can keep you can keep that you can keep that you can keep God has something better. God has something bigger. God has something with prosperity. God has something of mercy. God has something of grace. God has something to bless me into my destiny. Somebody's here today. I dare you to bless God for the restoration of taking you back to get what he gave you. And the devil. I got to go home, y'all. I still got jet lag. Got to go, got to go, got to go, got to go. Watch this, watch this, watch this. Sit down, sit down. We're going in a minute. We're going in a minute. Going in a minute. A house of forgiveness. A house of mercy. I'm going home, y'all. A house of restoration. Come on with me. And then he says, verse 26. When the heaven is shut up, ah, God. And there is no rain because they have sinned against thee. Yet, if you didn't get it, no rain, drought, parched land, destitution, desert bearings, but if somebody in a desert if they pray toward this place and confess thy name and turn from their sin when thou dost afflict them 27 then there it is then hear thou from heaven watch this now forgive the sin when thou hast taught them the good way wherein they should walk and send rain upon the land which thou hast given unto thy people as an inheritance. Look at me. When there is no rain, there is no harvest. It does not matter what seeds have been planted. If there is no rain, seeds that have been planted will die in the ground. When there is no rain, it does not matter how well you have tended the seed that have been sown. For if there is no rain to water and to nurture the seed, your labor will be in vain. And so the Bible paints a picture where there has been no rain. And yet he says there is no rain because of sin. Notice if you will. It is not just that God has taken them through a dry season, but rather 
that there are those who because of their sin God has shut up the heavens it does not matter how they labored and how they worked because there was no rain but someone would realize that the reason that there is no rain is because there is sin in my life and if someone walking through a dry and barren land can realize that God is a God of mercy he is a God of forgiveness he is a God of long suffering and a God of compassion if there's someone who realizes that they're walking through a barren land because of sin in their lives watch what he says now if thy people shall call upon your name and confess their sin if we confess our sins he is faithful and just to not only forgive us of our sins but to cleanse us from all unrighteousness and then the prayer of Solomon says once God has forgiven us and he has cleansed us then he said Lord let it rain this is not only going to be a house of forgiveness it will not only be a house of mercy it will not only be a house of rest of mercy of restoration it will be a house of prosperity a house where God looks beyond the fault of his people and opens up the windows of heaven and pours out blessings that the people of God cannot even receive for it's going to rain city of refuge I came by to tell you that the weather report is that the rain clouds are gathering I came by to tell you that God has heard your plea and he has decided to release a wind that will gather the clouds that are filled with favor clouds that are filled with blessings clouds that are filled with prosperity clouds that are filled with grace if he can just find somebody who will call upon his name God I feel your help in here if he can find somebody maybe there's nobody in here tonight who knows what it's like to walk in a dry and barren land somebody came in here today God I feel it and you're walking in a dry marriage somebody came here today you're walking in a dry career somebody came here today you're walking in a dry prayer life somebody came here today you're walking dry in your spiritual life somebody came here today you're dry in your finances and God says if you call upon his name he will open up the windows of heaven tell your neighbor it's gonna rain my daddy back in East St. Louis had a habit of stepping out on the back porch looking up into the clouds over St. Louis it was always dry it was even sunshine sometimes but my daddy had a strange way of feeling his knees daddy would say son it's gonna rain I said daddy I don't see a cloud in the sky he said son I just feel like it's gonna rain somebody's in here today God brought you to the city of refuge and I'm telling you what God would have you to know it's gonna rain God help me preach this thing in your life today I know you cannot see the cloud I know you can't feel the rain but I came by as a prophet of God I feel something moving down in my knees I feel like it's gonna rain is there anybody here today God help me preach this thing who needs the rain to fall all you have to do is ask and pray for rain get ready city of refuge I know you got a beautiful roof on this place I know you spent a lot of money to make sure that this place would not leak but I got news for you Bishop in spite of your labor I don't care how much money you spent I know you got ceiling on top of this building but the weather report is it's gonna rain God I feel like preaching here is there anybody here tonight who needs rain in your family is there anybody here tonight that needs rain in your career is there anybody here tonight that needs rain in your finances I tell you we're gonna pray for rain we're gonna trust God for rain this shall be a house of productivity because the rain of God is gonna fall on this place I feel like 
like the old preacher back in the south in the country he said saints of God on tomorrow night we're gonna have a prayer meeting it had not rained in that country town for years on end and the crops failed every season but the old preacher said tomorrow night on a Monday night we're gonna come knee bent and body God I feel like preaching and body bowed and we're gonna pray for rain is there anybody here tonight who wants to pray for rain is there anybody tonight who realizes that God is a God of rain he's a God of clouds he's a God of moisture because we're gonna come to the house of God and we're gonna fall on our knees and we're gonna pray for rain the old preacher told the saints gather tomorrow night in the house of prayer and we're gonna pray for rain sure enough Monday night in this old little country town they came to pray for rain all the saints of God had gathered because the preacher said on Sunday we're gonna gather in God's house and we're gonna pray for rain is there anybody tonight who needs rain tonight somebody help me praise God because rain is on the way come on in praise in the night is there anybody who can trust God to call upon rain it was Monday night in the old country church and all the saints were gathering to pray for rain the children were playing on the porch of the little church house because the preacher said we're gonna pray for rain the children began to look down the old dusty road all they could see was dust flying coming up in the air they looked a little closer and they saw a strange sight it was good old mother jones mother jones was coming to the prayer meeting at night because the preacher said we're gonna pray for rain the children began to make fun of him they began to laugh at her because mother jones was dressed in a strange way they ran to call the old preacher they said pastor pastor something is wrong with mother jones they said what's wrong with mother jones they said look yonder she's dressed up in strange garments they looked down the road and there come mother jones and dust was flying with every step that she took mother jones had on an old yellow raincoat y'all ain't never seen that old yellow raincoat she had on a yellow rain hat mother jones was walking to the house of prayer in her hand she had a parasol y'all too young to know what that is that's a fancy umbrella and on her feet she had some old goloshes y'all never been in those goloshes it's back in the country with big old boots with buckles on them mother jones was walking and every step that she took she was kicking up dust because mother jones heard god say we're gonna pray for rain the children began to laugh at her they began to make fun of her the pastor said mother jones mother jones why are you dressed in such a strange way mother jones said pastor i thought i heard you say that tonight the saints of god was gonna gather to pray for rain and it seems to me if we pray for rain somebody ought to come expecting rain to fall is there anybody here come on and praise god come on and bless him let it rain lord rain in city of refuge let it rain lord open up your umbrella because the rain is going to fall rain on your home rain on your marriage rain on your children rain in your finances come on and bless god i just feel like rain is gonna fall i got a feeling i can't explain it i cannot articulate it i cannot put the verbs and lexicons together but i came to tell you that the rain is coming get ready child of god stretch out on your faith if you really trust God you don't have to wait until the rain falls you can feel it deep down in your soul somebody begin to praise God 
and thank God for the rain that's coming. Come on and bless him. Come on and bless him. Y'all ain't praising him. Somebody thank him. Thank you for the rain. Let the rain fall. Let your favor fall. Let your grace fall. Come on and bless God, somebody. Praise him like you're walking in the rain. Celebrate like you're walking in the rain. Somebody dance, dancing in the rain. Lift up your hands. Thank him for the rain. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Y'all ain't praising him. Come on and thank him. Come on and bless him. Glory to your name. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to your name. Come on and thank him. Don't worry about your neighbor. They weren't with you when you walked through dry places. They were not there when your land was dry and parched. Come on and bless God today. Come on and thank him in the name of Jesus. Praise him tonight. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Give God a rain praise. Give God a crazy praise. Somebody's got a breakthrough coming. Praise him till the clouds roll by. Praise him till you get your cloud burst. Praise him till you get your breakthrough. Hallelujah. Come on and praise him. Come on and bless him, somebody. Somebody ought to praise God. Just to spite the devil. Praise God. Because the devil thought he had you. Praise God. The devil should have taken you out. The last time he had you down. Praise God. 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 neighbor you ought to praise God because you know can't nobody do you hallelujah still raining still raining still raining still raining When I was a little boy in East St. Louis, Bishop, we had a strange thing in the Midwest, strange kind of storms. One day my cousin and I were in my front yard on one side of the street, we were playing in the dust, playing marbles, playing marbles, and a strange thing happened. It started to rain, but it started to rain across the street in Miss Eula May's yard. I was over on my side of the street praising God and celebrating shooting marbles in the dry dust. But my cousin wore across the street in Miss Eula May's yard where the rain was falling and I looked and they were celebrating and jumping over and down saying, hey, come on over to Miss Eula May's yard. I came by here to tell you that City of Refuge is Miss Eula May's yard. Come on up in here and let the rain of God's favor fall on you. Rain, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to your name. And it shall rain in this house.
when it rains, you don't want to come in out of the rain. You want to stand in the rain and say, rain on me. Rain on me, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And the rain shall come. And the dryness in your life shall receive the rain of God's favor. The reign of God's mercy. The reign of God's grace. Once the rain is on the way, there's nothing man can do. To stop the rain. Old blues song I was right up. I can't stop the rain on my window. Because when God gets ready to turn on the rain, I just want to be where the rain is falling. Ah, God. Everyone standing, everyone standing. And Solomon stood before the people with his hands stretched out to God. And he prayed a prayer for the prayers that would be prayed by the prayers in that place. And he said, Lord, if they pray this way, then would you answer this way? A house of forgiveness. Because every person in this room at one time or another stands in need of forgiveness. house of mercy but even when those who come because it is a house of prayer for all people there will be those who will obstinately walk apart from the will of God but Solomon said Lord don't punish the whole house for the one who walks in unrighteousness mercy city of refuge shall be a house of restoration the things that have been lost by bad decisions bad choices fleeting seasons of lust and Solomon says Lord if they come to you with prayer and supplication forgive them but then take them back to the place that you gave them in the first place and restore that that you have ordained for them city of refuge shall be a house of prosperity where the reign of God's favor will rest on this house bishop 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 had the doors anointed The presence of God will rest in this house to such a great degree you can't even sneak in here and not get blessed <laughs> Cr 
critics will come through these doors naysayers seeking the seat of the scornful and mess up because they come in they do better to sit on the parking lot but once they come in these anointed doors they'll get wet with the rain of the anointing of God that rests on this place now father as Solomon prayed I pray I pray for the prayers that will be prayed by the prayers who pray in this place that if they come to you with hearts of contrition you will hear and heal deliver and set free and the rain of your favor shall abide in the cloud of your presence and we thank you for it in Jesus name come on help me praise the Lord somebody <laughs>